All right, Lance, you there? I'm here. All it's right, spirit and flesh. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to drop. Mm -hmm. Feel free to turn your camera on if you want to. I don't want to scare anybody away. You guys ready? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's go with old. There he is. All right. I think I, there he is. I see a couple uh, Jim Cochran books back there. <laughs> Marketing 101 in the left-hand corner. <laughs> yep. I got that back in 2012. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us. We want to go ahead and get started because we want to be respectful of your time. So this is a, an intro to private label the easy way. My goal is to uh, pull back the curtain as far as I possibly can on a free webinar. And uh, at the end of this, if you have any private label knowledge whatsoever, you're going to be able to take this information and run with it for sure. Um, Lance, go ahead and quickly just introduce yourself. I think everybody knows you, but hey, what's up, guys? I am Lance Wolf, the Wolf Man, and you, welcome to the Wolf and R. Some people are saying we should have <laughs> called it the Wolf and R. Yeah. Um, so I met Ryan. Um, We've known each other almost three years now, I think. That's right. Uh, we met at Jim Cochran's conference. And just to make this brief, I was doing a lot of retail arbitrage, which means running around the stores, um, you know, treasure hunting, basically, trying to find all the good clearance products um, and turning them on Amazon. And, you know, it was good. It, it worked out great. Um, I was able to maintain that business for seven years, but it was pretty scary because once you're out of stock, you're done. Yep. But when I met Ryan, he taught me another way, um, and it's called private label the easy way. He's going to get into it, and it doesn't involve spending, you know, thousands of dollars. You can really start out pretty cheap. So I'll let you uh, get into that, Ryan. But I just wanted to let them know how much it really changed my business meeting you. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and go right into it. So Lance, if you'll turn off your camera, I'll turn off mine, and we'll jump right in. Let's do it. All right, here. Big Abe, Nancy. All right, present to everyone. There it is. All right, Lance, can you see that? I can see it perfectly. Cool. All right, so guys, just so you know, um, in the chat box, I have um, my wife helping me out here, so it'll say if you ask a question in the middle of the webinar while I'm talking, and I'm also typing, it's not me multitasking. Um, it has uh, my wife's here helping me out with uh, any questions. So we're going to jump right into private label the easy way revealed. All right, so I want you to stay tuned. Um, we have a super sweet bonus at the end. Um, November 2008, um, I was looking for a job. I was actually worked for a congressional campaign and we lost. So I, uh, all I knew was that I was going to move to Texas and I was getting married. Um, I didn't have a job and uh, I had been following Jim Cochran since about 2003, 2004. Um, I read his book, Silent Sales Machine. And I had always been had an interest in running my own business, but it wasn't until you know 2008 that I pretty much had to do something, uh, needed to make this work. My mother-in-law had some wholesale contacts for furniture from her job. And my wife and mother-in-law had been just working part-time, throwing ads up on Craigslist in the DFW area. And uh, so I told my wife, I think we can make this a, a, a real business and you know blow it up full-time uh, with the furniture. But my wife says, no, you need to go get a job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this picture <laughs> you guys a second to to read that one um <laughs> kind of funny but um actually to be honest with you she was very supportive um she did say you know i'd love for you to look for a job at the same time as you're trying to build the business um but i actually spent way more time uh build trying to build the business than uh looking for a job um in 2008 i ended we started basically the first of december had a whopping six thousand one hundred and fifty four dollars in sales in 2008, so uh, not very exciting, not enough to uh, live on. Um, in 2009, though, by the grace of God, we did 250,000 in sales with a ton of hustle. Uh, I, Malene was back at the house posting ads on Craigslist, and I was the one post or going over to the warehouse, picking up all the furniture and a trailer that was borrowed from my father-in-law, 
and then uh, did all the deliveries myself. Um, I can't even imagine that I did that, but we did and um, did 250,000 in sales. Uh, here's a picture of our the house that we were living in at the time with the garage completely stacked from front to back with furniture. We had people that were um, actually picked up too that decided not to pay for delivery, but they would come to the house and pick up the furniture. Here's another ad or another picture of me. Actually, this is Google Maps or sorry, Google Image or Google. Um, you know when they drive around and take pictures. Um, Google Earth, right? We're actually driving around and caught me right. Yeah, Google Earth caught me right. When I was outside, so this is me <laughs> uh, on on Google Earth on Google Maps or Google Earth. Um, with the trailer there that was borrowed. But in 2010, we got a, a, a letter from the city saying that we could no longer run a retail business out of our house. So we had to find some uh, retail space. We found about 2,000 square feet. We opened up a furniture store and absolutely hated it. Um, we continued to post ads all over the country. Uh, our business actually increased, but then in 2012, our Craigslist ads stopped working. Um, and then, but then uh, God had a plan. And in 2012, Jim Cockrum did a 101 free marketing, uh, was an auction on eBay that I woke up one morning and told Melaine, I, I really need to win this. I feel like I'm supposed to bid a certain amount. And it was a lot of money for us at the time. Still would be a lot of money. Uh, Jim graciously, I won. And Jim graciously, instead of a 30 minute phone call, allowed me to uh, go to lunch with him. My parents live really close to where he lives, and so instead of a phone call, I said, can we just go out to lunch? And he was, uh, again, very gracious and allowed us to do that. We spent two hours, and I'm not kidding you, that was a lunch that changed my life because he told me about Amazon FBA. Um, in 2013, we got into private label, and so that's the, the topic of, of today's webinar. Um, what is private label? Essentially, it's just my easy way def definition is just having your own brand of an item. Think of Walmart, they have a brand called Great Value Brand, and they have ketchup and green beans and peas and tomatoes. You know, Walmart doesn't have their own farms, although they probably could. They use companies like Red Gold, which is out of Elwood, Indiana. They have tomato farmers um, that are contracted, and they make salsa and ketchup. And so what, they, what Red Gold does is just sell the exact same product in a different bottle, in a different jar, and companies like Walmart buy those and just put their label on it. So that's exactly what private label it is. It's been in the grocery industry for a really long time and you can do it on Amazon. It's um, funny, Ryan, too, yeah. if I can just jump in real yeah, quick. Then I want you to jump in as much as you need to, buddy. And this, this is really hard for you guys probably that have been doing retail arbitrage to envision private label. It took me so long to get the concept. But if you can just picture, when you think of Heinz ketchup, it's so hard for us to look at that ketchup bottle and not see that Heinz label, right? Yep. You look at that bottle and all you think is Heinz, but just picture that bottle before that label is on there. It's just a, a clear, you know, plastic or glass jar, and there's nothing in it but ketchup. Now envision putting your label over top that ketchup bottle, and now it becomes your brand. That's awesome. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, what if you had one or two products that consistently did 10,000 or more in sales each month? Um, you probably feel like this girl here. Um, actually, you know, and there's there's people, and um, Lance is doing more than this, um, and there's guys in my MMA group. And by the way, uh, Lance is one of my MMA guys. We just had an awesome conference here in uh, Grapevine just a couple weeks ago. Um, but there's guys in my group that are doing way, way more than this, and there's people online. You're going to talk. Um, Andy Slammons is going to be at CES this year and presenting about private label. He's doing a whole lot more than 10,000 in sales a month. But the reason I picked this figure out is because this is what one of our products does, and it's a to me, I think it's just more believable. It's more achievable. It's it doesn't. It sounds more realistic. If you're just getting into private label or never done it before at all, you can wrap your head around ten thousand um, dollars. But when people throw out these big numbers like a hundred thousand, you know, you know, you can totally get there. But it just doesn't sound as believable or achievable if you're just getting started. So uh, if you look at this and think of ten thousand dollars in sales. Um, you know, they're going to be $2,500 to $3,000 in profit. Would that change your life? That probably would at least change your business. Um, that's, you know, a mortgage payment. So just think about that. One or two products consistently did 10000 or more in sales each month. So th again, this is very, very doable. Lance does it all the time. Um, we do it, and pretty much every guy in, our, in my MMA group does it. 
and you can too. Uh, why I love private label, and this is easy, it's become my absolute favorite type of inventory. Um, Lance, why don't you talk real quick about how you go, used to go around from store to store and what you were telling me. I was going to say, Ryan, I, if you're going to say why you love it, I want to say why I love it too. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be left out here. It, it's just amazing. I mean, you guys are going to be fascinated about what you're going to learn on this webinar and if you decide to take it farther and, to, you know, to keep diving into private label. Um, for me, it was it was the best thing that I've ever done in my business. And I've been doing this 10 years. It's not like I just started, you know, six months ago or I just picked up Amazon. I've been doing this 10 years now and meeting Ryan totally changed my business. Um, just that I can replenish an item over and over and over. And that's everybody's dream. Your dream is to, even if you've never sold um, on Amazon or eBay or any of these, these channels out there, your dream is to find a product and to replenish it. That's what the big stores do. That's what the big boys do. So um, for me, I mean, I love it. I, I could sit here all day and talk about why I love private labor. <laughs> you, still have your, you, have, you still have that van? Oh, yeah, I got the van, but I hardly ever use it anymore, man. It's just, uh, you know, when I want to go out just for fun, you know, to do retail arbitrage or to make some extra cash, I go out. Um, I also go out just to get ideas, you know. I check the end caps um, to see what products are hot. Yep, absolutely. All right, so why I love it, and Lance told you why he loves it, and this is some of the same reasons. No competition. If you guys sell toys during Christmas time, you know what, what competition's like. You know, you can have on a Lego or a, a Play-Doh set, uh, hundreds of sellers on one listing. How often can you actually get the buy box with that amount of competition? Can you imagine what it would be like to be the only seller on a listing? That's actually what you can do with private label. Uh, you don't have to worry about pricing lower than the next guy to win the buy box or praying that Amazon you know, doesn't come on the listing and price it lower than you can actually source it. That's so frustrating when that happens. Um, have you guys ever used a cheat code in a video game? I kind of feel like private labels that way. It's um, you know, the one where you uh, kind of <laughs> cheat codes that make you invincible to all the enemies. Yes. It's not a perfect analogy, but it, it is, in a way it does feel like you're cheating because when you're used to dealing with other sellers that tank the price or cringing to see Amazon in your listing, private label does really seem like cheating. because It's, it's funny, real better. quick, Ryan, um, yeah. if I can one more time. It, it, it's almost, almost like... like what you what said has hit home to me because I was just talking to Mike, one of the guys who were in the MMA group, and I was like, man, it does feel like a video game. You know, private label feels like we're cheating. It doesn't even seem fair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. That's so true. And then, um, it's not like it's not going to come without work, but um, it does, uh, in my opinion, it beats the heck out of all those other sources of inventory. Number two, it's replenishable. Um, I talk about this when I talk about wholesale a lot, but you know, private label is replenishable as well. You guys ever been to a retail store and found an amazing item that sold ridiculously well only to not be able to find it again? It's That's so, so frustrating. Um, private label solves this problem as well. And it, uh, it's basically once you get your product selling well, all you really need to do is just make sure to keep ordering more. And sometimes, believe it or not, that's actually a challenge uh, to make sure that you stay in stock. If you get a product that starts selling really well, um, Lance has been in this boat, the, um, where it'll sell so fast that you can't replenish it fast enough, um, which is a good problem, I guess, but uh, you definitely want to try to stay in stock. Three is it's virtually unlimited. Um, while you might not really want to private label a, a cell phone because that's brand driven or like a refrigerator because it's too big, there's really virtually an unlimited amount of product at your disposal. Um, and I'll get to what to look for and avoid when picking a product later, but there's just so many products out there that you can, that you can private label. Um, number four, you can build your own brand. You can do with it what you want. As we start, you know, going down the road with the Amazon, sometimes it gets so frustrating. They'll you sell a bunch. You have people that um, that say that you're selling something fraudulent. Amazon can you know uh, can cut off an existing listing that's yours, and you have to send in invoices. And you know, those are all issues that you can get past. But it's frustrating. You're still playing an Amazon sandbox. They control the rules. It's um, it's their playground, and so think about going off of Amazon. Think about having a Shopify store. Uh, if you have a product that's selling really well on Amazon, you can then go to a retail store, a brick and mortar store, and say, "Hey, I got this product that's selling really well on Amazon. Would you like to carry it?" In fact, one of our products that we're doing really well with, we 
uh, we're at a local store here, and we're just talking to the owner and said, hey, would you like to you know, have stock these in your store? And so I'm actually going to take one over to him um, and see if they're interested in having it there. So that would be cool. That'd be a total first for me. Awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> so the possibilities are endless when you have your own brand of an item. This is my uh, private, the uh, inventory pyramid, essentially. I introduced this in my book, Beyond Arbitrage, that I wrote with John Bollard Sr. Essentially, it just goes from the very bottom top of inventory to the very top, and private labels at the top for me because you have full control. Obviously, you're on Amazon again, and you're, you're playing in their sandbox, and they have the rules, but you have more control than any other form of inventory. Um, there's so much barrier to entry in these lower levels down here. Um, but then when you get up to wholesale, people just think it's more scary. And when you get up to private label, it sounds a whole lot scarier. So you just have less people that you're competing against. So here's private label, the harder, scarier way. Uh, it's not like, you know, you can't do it. Uh, you shouldn't do it this way. It's just when I was getting started, my wife and I were actually building the house. And I didn't have a lot of extra money sitting around um, to be able to invest in a private label product from overseas. So I, I, well, I'll get into it here in a second, but this is how I found this method because normally you think of private label, you think of going to Alibaba.com, searching for a product, and then contacting the supplier. Usually the suppliers are in China, and there's just a lot of other, there's a lot of obstacles that come with that. Again, not I, I would never ever tell somebody not to do it this way. Um, I have friends that do it very, very, very successfully importing from China. It's just at my stage when I got into private label, that's not where I was. I couldn't have um, I couldn't have afforded the minimums, and it just seemed a lot scarier for me. And so when I found this method, I just thought there's a lot of people out there that just they want to do private label, but the obstacles are so high uh, with dealing with China. There's you know the trust factor. You've you've heard probably all have heard stories about ordering somebody orders something and they don't get the exact item or they get the sample and once the actual products come in mm -hmm. they're just not the same um so you have the trust factor you have the language barrier uh now a lot of them you know you're, you're dealing with them on skype and you know they do speak english but just not you know perfectly obviously um so that's just another barrier that you're dealing with there's the high shipping cost um with ocean freight you can have um actually ocean shape Ocean freight is cheaper. Um, you can do air freight, which is really high, but you get the items much faster. So, just another another hurdle. Uh, it's funny too, Ryan, when you say yeah. when you say high shipping um, for you know coming over by the slow boat, you also got to think about <laughs> thirty days. I'm sure you're going to mention that too. There's there's lead times you got to. Yeah, I'd well, love, love for you to talk about that. Um, yeah, you can actually do um, some sourcing uh, that this way as well. Um, sure. talk, go ahead and talk about all of me tell you real quick the high minimums one to three thousand units there's customs and then there's long wait times so that's it feel free to what, what are some of your experience how long does it take to get a product um if you're doing china yes yeah it takes a pretty long time um obviously air shipment doesn't take too long but if you're doing the boat it's going to take uh anywhere from 30 to 60 days uh -huh. and i've learned that initially um when i was working with with us wholesalers mm -hmm. they would give me their estimate on when they're going to receive their product which in turn i'm going to take their product and put my label on that they're going to keep everything in their warehouse and send it into amazon for me that's one way the other way is if you're going to china um and it's still going to be the same same amount of time but you have to deal with it yourself so i kind of got off on a tangent there but basically uh -huh. it's anywhere from 30 to 60 days yeah um when you're waiting for stuff coming from China. Absolutely. That's some long wait times. So here's private label, the easy way. Um, and those of you that are in uh, my mentoring group, you already understand what this is, but this is the method that I kind of stumbled upon. And then when I was at uh, Jim Cockrum's mastermind group um, a year and a half ago or so, I just brought up the idea of, I think a book called Private Label the Easy Way would, would do well um, because there's people that want to do private label, but they see the obstacles of sourcing from China or overseas. And so he said, go for it. And he helped me launch it. So um, this is the private label, the easy way method, um, essentially sourced domestically. There are companies um, here in the United States or wherever you live that you can get products from. They then believe it or not, there are actually suppliers with actual already built in private label programs. So if you do, and a lot of times grocery companies are this way, 
if you search for a grocery item or health and beauty item, many of them will have a private label program in place that you can essentially just contact them and say, hey, I want to private label this toothpaste or, uh, or this uh, you know, quinoa or whatever it is. Um, there, we went, actually, there was a show called the Private Label Manufacturers Association that we went to in Chicago. Um, Lance, you were there, right, with us? Yeah, yeah. that was um, great. It was so, cool. very cool. <laughs> it was cool. And that's a great place because there's so many suppliers there, and they all have private label programs. Now, those are very heavy in health and beauty and grocery. So if you're not wanting to go in that direction, that may not be the absolute best show for you. But just so you know that there are so many companies that already understand what this is, and they're not necessarily suppliers. Um, even wholesale companies, this is the one that is the biggest – uh, yes. the biggest point for private label the easy way when I was going down this road I contacted a manufacturer for the item that I was interested in and he told me uh, Ryan I can't make it for the price that you can buy it over here wholesale and essentially this company does they already import from China but they're a wholesaler so they um, are already bringing in containers of this stuff and selling it to retail stores so I, all I did was I contacted them and said, hey, I want to take this product. I want to, and I'll show you, we'll show you actual examples here so you can see what I mean with pictures. But I wanted to take their product, pull out their package insert, get one printed um, from uh, online somewhere or a local printer, and put in my own brand uh, with my own logo, my own package de design. Um, again, you have to ask permission from this for this. You don't just go out and do it. Um, <laughs> So, um, but the biggest thing to me was a wholesale company can do it. And you know what that means? If you're doing wholesale already, you know that the wholesale companies has, has very, very low minimums. Um, minimums as low as one case. So just, just to give you an idea, if you're going over to China, getting items that are 1,000 to 3,000 units, if your item costs $10, then you know $10 times 1,000 units, there's $10,000 right there. If you have to get 3,000 units, that's $30,000. Mm -hmm. I was able to start with just one case. Um, and I actually started with a couple cases because I wanted to get it going and, and get some reviews. But um, my, my investment in product was under $500, which is um, pretty unbelievable for a private label. So think about supplier. I mean, most of the time when you're doing searches for suppliers, and this is not even something I plan on saying, but you – would typically like Google uh, the item that you're interested in. So if it was silicone baking mat supplier, silicone baking mat manufacturer, think about wholesaler, silicone baking mat wholesaler. You know, if you go to the ASD show um, in Vegas, there are so many wholesalers there. When Lance talk about how uh, yeah. the private label has just like expanded the, the how you even view uh, a trade show. I was actually excited to chime in on this one. Um, <laughs> Just because, you know, when you were talking about ASD, it made me think about, um, I was actually working with somebody from ASD. I think I'm getting an echo. I can hear you okay. It's like um, when I talk, I can hear my voice. Actually, no, that sounds better. Okay, great. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so anyhow, yeah. So when you mentioned ASD, it made me think of my story and how you helped me with, with wholesale and taking wholesale and turning it into private label. So... There was a product that I was selling, and actually, like a couple other guys were selling um, in our group. And I went to ASD, and I located a uh, um, somebody that was selling that product. And initially, I started selling it wholesale, and it did really well. I mean, it started off like twenty a day, and I got it up to like one hundred fifty a day. And then next thing I know, everybody found that same supplier, mm. and you know, three or four days later, you know, a week later, it was still good. But then like, you know, two weeks later, I see like eight guys on my product. I'm like, oh man, I put all the work in, I did all the marketing and now the whole listing is, is just crashed. So then I remember what Ryan told me about, you know, switching the, in, you know, insert stickers, whatever. So what I did is I took that product and I just took their logo off and put mine on. And now it became my own product. I relaunched it, had the same results. I was doing great, selling 30 a day. It increased to 50. Then I got up to 100 a day. And guess what? Nobody jumped on it because nobody had my brand. 
Yep. So it just looks like when you're going through a trade show, it just kind of opens your eyes. You see so much Absolutely. more opportunities besides just wholesale. So the minimum is as low as one case. Uh, obviously, no customs issues if you're getting it from the states or domestically where you're wherever you're from. Low shipping cost. Uh, this is for me. The guys that are in my group can't believe this, but when I run out or get close to running out, I can just send. And Barrington talks about three emails, um, <laughs> but I can send one email. Barrington's three emails essentially is when you run out, you get it. You send an email to the manufacturer or your supplier saying that you need more, then you get an email from um, Amazon. What's first one? First one's Amazon saying that you're low, and then you send them one to your supplier, then the next one's that that they're your item. Amazon's is receiving your product, right? That's the last product. one. <laughs> so, uh, so this one is one email. All I have to do is email my, my wholesaler and say, hey, I need more of these. And since they actually are only 25 minutes away from me, they will send a delivery guy in a truck right to our house. Um, and we have a girl that will help us uh, process this. So um, pretty sweet. And it's uh, the three no, no way that, I mean, honestly, it was just the grace of God that I came across this, the product and the, the supplier uh, being just a few minutes away from our house. Uh, you know, I could get into private label so easy. But even if you don't, you know, it's not in your, your town, uh, you're sourcing domestically, the shipping cost is going to be way, way lower than dealing with, uh, in, you know, ocean freight or air freight. Um, and actually, they can ship to Amazon for you. And Lance, you're, you're having some of your suppliers do that, aren't you? Yeah, and that's that's the wonderful thing. Ryan and I were talking before this call, and I said, man, it's like I feel like I do all my business from the computer chair now. <laughs> I used to be like on the road all day, you know, hitting stores, coming home, packing everything up, sending it out. And I actually sent out some items from Retail Arbitrage the other day. I was like, wow, they changed a lot of the settings on here. I couldn't figure out how to send the stuff out. Because I'm so used to doing LTL now where your supplier will ship it directly into Amazon. So with private label the easy way, it, it really is easy because you're not touching the box tape. You're not, you know, picking up 50-pound boxes and, and going to UPS or having them come and helping them out. So it's really a relief. Yep. That's awesome. And so, you know, you just you kind of takes you out of the process and you allows you to basically focus on what only you can do. And that's one thing I learned at our conference is that, you know, anything you can do to outsource, uh, get a VA, anything that basically, you know, Jim Cochran talks about this. You should only be really doing I product or projects or tasks that really only you can do. And I know that's, you know, not everybody's in that situation. And once in a while I still touch box tape, but you know, that should be your goal is to get to a level where, you know, it's, you're not doing the menial tasks that you can pay somebody $10 an hour or less to do, especially, you know, you go to get a VA or something to do some of these things for you. It just frees up your time to focus on what's really important in your business. Um, also, it's just, again, like we talked about, it's just very, very fast. So seven te step tests for private label. I know some of you ask like product ideas. Um, and this is not something I've ever shared in a webinar before. Um, this is only in my uh, mentoring program, but I'm going to go through this briefly just to give you an idea. Um, the things that you're looking for are generic, non-brand driven. So items like an iPhone, uh, Nike shoes, those are all brand driven items. Nobody's going to buy, you know, we joke around about, um, you know, creating a, a shoe called Mikey. Um, Obviously, that wouldn't sell very well. You know, Nike rules. Uh, you know, it's just a, a brand that you don't want to go up against. So you're looking for generic items that don't have, that are not, not a brand-driven item, where people are buying it because it's a certain brand. You want small items because obviously you don't want to deal with a lot of uh, over oversized fees. Smaller the better. But again, if it's uh, that the margins are there, I'll do an oversized item. I don't have a problem with that. We just need to make sure the margin margins are there. Um, easy to replicate, meaning it's just something that's easy to make. Uh, not many working parts, so a, an electronic item would not be a very good uh, start. I mean, not saying that you couldn't do it. Um, Lance put in the chat there a spatula, a garden gnome, and we're actually going to talk about those items. Um, so you, it's not that you shouldn't ever do electronics. It's just um, that's probably not the best place to start. Um, it's just you know makes it much harder. Number five, retail price between $10 and $50. Again, this is just a general rule. Uh, the reason for the $10 is if it's retailed at 10, um, your price, you know, maybe it's $2, maybe it's $2.50. There's just not a lot of profit there, as you guys know with the FBA fees, if an item's less than $10. 
And the reason we, you know, don't go over 50 typically is because then you just a whole lot more investment in it, but you can go as high or as low as you really want to. This is just a general rule of six sales rank um, for me. And if you go actually go through other private label programs, they'll talk about, you know, the, the best, the better the rank, the better, uh, you know, you want like the top half percent. And of course that makes a whole lot of sense. If you are importing, you know, one or 3000 units from China, you don't really, you know, it, it takes the same amount of effort to launch a product, whether it's ranked one or it's ranked a million. So for sales rank for private label, the easy way, I'm not quite as strict. I actually like to stay within the top 3%. Um, and that's typically my, my sales rank for retailer arbitrage and online arbitrage items. And again, this is just kind of whatever works for your business. Uh, but general for me, top 3% for me, because if you're getting it the easy way, you can buy one or two cases to start off. You can buy small and test it. And I'm happy selling a couple items a day on something. Um, if I can get it very easily, but if I have to source it from China, then I want it to sell really quickly because I want to get my investment back quickly. Lance, what about you? You have any thoughts on, I was actually thinking while you're, you're talking about different products and, um, some of the premium, 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 some of the premium products, um, sometimes you'll see like a higher sales rank, um, but the profit is bigger. There's yeah. some items I was looking at where yeah. you might have to pay, you know, 15 a unit or something like that, but you could uh -huh. probably sell them for 50 or $60 and you're making a lot on each one. Let's say you sell seven or eight a day, mm -hmm. you're still doing pretty good on that kind of product. And yeah. one of the good thing about premium products is it, it really keeps out um, a lot of the competition. You got to think that, you know, a lot of people are going to be going for the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to start out and test, this is private label. The easy way allows you to, you know, test some of these premium products. Um, I'm not saying that's all you need to focus on, but just to keep that, you know, in the back of your mind mm -hmm. for that. So, you know, Lance put in there that let's say you're doing home and kitchen. I would look for products under five to 6,000. You know, actually my, my uh, range would actually be higher. I don't mind an item that's mm -hmm. in the 30, 40, 50,000 range at home and kitchen because I have an item right now that's probably 30,000. I may sell five a day, um, which is not very sexy. If you're having <laughs> to bring in 3000 units, it'll take you a really long time to get through those. But if I can call up a wholesaler down the road and they can bring me more anytime I want, if I'm making, if I'm selling five a day and I'm making five or $10 a pop on each one, let's say $10, which on in this product, particular product it is about $10. That's $50 a day in profit times 30, you know, $1,500 in profit a month on one item. Um, sure. It doesn't sell as fast as, you know, some of other people's products, but um, I just, uh, with the easy way it just kind of changes it up. It changes, you know, you don't have to be as strict in my opinion. Yeah. Um, right. Can, yeah. Go for it. The great thing too, is you always have that option if you want to, you know, reach out to China and increase your inventory. And the good thing about private label, the easy way it allows you to play the game that you feel comfortable playing. If you want to, you know, bring in a couple cases at a time and you're happy with that, you can do that. If you feel like, okay, I'm ready to, to do a pallet now, you can do that and you can just gradually move up as opposed to, you know, laying down 30 grand and, and hoping it works out. So, um, I would recommend it to anybody, especially with this. The last thing is reviews. Um, again, a lot of programs will say a certain amount. I typically like for it to be as low as possible. Um, you know, 300 or below 300 is a lot of reviews to try to compete against, but you'll find items that maybe the top item has a few thousand, but there's things on page one of the exact same item that have less than 50 reviews. And, uh, so those are items that you can, you can kind of target those and you think if, if it paid, if an item is on page one for a certain keyword, it's moving a lot. Uh, and if it only has a few reviews and you can kind of take over, you know, take over that listing pretty easily or overtake it. I mean, so here's the examples, um, a Navy blue linen table runner. And that, as I was putting this together, I actually noticed that the price is $75. So, uh, it's outside of my $50 price point. But again, if I was going to get this for, let's say $15, $25, I don't have a problem with it if it's the easy way um, because you don't have to order thousands of them. Um, but the reason I picked this out is because it's fairly generic. It's just um, a table runner in, in the blue color. Uh, it would be very easy to find somebody to, 
that maybe you can find the exact same manufacturer for this one. If not, I, there's probably uh, companies in the States that make items like this. Uh, here's a uh, kitchen utensil set, the silicone. I know a lot of that stuff is made in China, so, but I, um, one company actually, there was a, just an idea for this one is there's a company at ASD that makes kitchen tools and it's, they're pretty generic items. And we actually went up to them and asked them about taking items out of their packaging and put them in, into our own. And they said we could totally do that. Now we didn't follow up on that opportunity, but there's some, a free one for you guys. If you guys go to ASD, um, look for companies that have items like this that are very generic, that um, would be very easy to take it out of their packaging and throw it into yours. Lance, I'll let you talk about this. All right, the garden now. So this is a product that I was selling well, um, retail arbitrage. I knew it was a good seller. Um, I actually never private label this. Um, so it, it's actually, this is a workable item. This isn't just an example we're putting up there um, and hoping nobody, you know, takes advantage of it. This actually will work. So <laughs> it's something that I found doing retail arbitrage. So I went to ASD and there was a stand where a guy had, um, garden gnomes and what they were is instead of having this label they were just brown boxes but let's say they did have this label you can still approach that booth because you have to think of the people in, at these trade shows everybody's I would say Brian probably 95 percent of the people are manufacturers um, so when you approach the booth don't think about this label is as you have to sell this particular brand I can't even read it it's so small I think it says thumbs up thumbs up they, Think of this as your brand. Envision this as a, a plain brown box and envision your label over top this box. Here, um, so that's, that's how I do it. Yeah, so perfect. So here is, here's how you want to envision this. Um, and basically all you really have to do is put a sticker on there or um, you could create a, a fancy box, but to start out, and if you want to test it out, I would probably just go with a brown box. And on this... Um Here's another example, just so you guys can see. Um, this is just some curtains. And so one way you could do private label is uh, it's, if you didn't have a sticker or you wanted to replace an insert, you know, imagine just opening up that, you know, here at the top, opening up the, the zipper, pulling out this insert here, getting it one made on your own, and just replacing it inside there. So, I mean, really it's as simple as that. And... Lance, on this brown boxes, where do you get those? What, for the brown boxes? Yeah, um, the brown boxes. Sometimes the manufacturer will do the brown boxing for you. Is that what you're uh -huh. asking? Like, um, or you could probably just order um, for the stickers. These uh -huh. are, Ryan just put this site up, um, printrunner.com and, and uprinting.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can set up stickers that you can put on, the, on your brown boxes um, or on your Sorry. however other product you want to do it. So. <laughs> My uh, cursor is going crazy, <laughs> um, but you can go to like Uline to get the boxes and things like that. Yeah, and you yeah, can go to printrunner.com and uprinting.com to actually get the stickers or the inserts made, and it's actually pretty easy. And so you would just you could have a designer on Fiverr create the the logos, and and I go into that in my mentoring program exactly how to do that. But you can uh, have a logo made with your own design and change it up so it doesn't look exactly like the one you're. Replacing. And Ryan, I would say probably. 19 out of 20 booths that I went up to uh -huh. everybody with private labeling when you see their product yeah. and they, they all know what you're talking about. So, you know, some people might be fearful that you walk up and the, you know, the booth's not going to know what you're talking about, <laughs> but I would say, you know, 95% of these people know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, the price is going to be a lot cheaper sometimes when you're private labeling, when you get to that point, when all you're right. going to go to China, but if you want to just start off light, you know, yeah. You can test. Yeah, that's the thing is you can test this. And so you, you're just going through a wholesaler or, you know, domestic supplier. And so you can order a small quantity. And if you get an item that starts to sell really well, then there's no reason you can't go straight to China and then order it cheaper. Uh, this is just a way to to get into private label without all the cost and the, the high minimums. So are you guys ready to jump into private label? I know Lance is. Uh, I want to introduce the private label, the Easy Way Mentoring Program. Uh, and uh, it's pretty exciting. We've been doing this as we've had, we started this one year ago. 
um, and this is the anniversary. And so I wanted to show you guys, we're doing an anniversary sale here at the end, which is absolutely crazy. But we have six modules that we break it down into 17 lessons. So I'm gonna just run through every single one of these lessons very, very quickly. Introduction to private label, which is essentially some the same information I've already gone over. Private label explained, we went through that, so you guys are already ahead. Why private label should be a part of your business. Again, it's a lot of the same content, uh, which is showing you like why we would love private label, why it should be a part of your business. Uh, developing your own private label strategy. There's things like, um, you know, should it be, should you be 100% private label? Should you kind of just dip your toe in the water and get started? There's different strategies for it. Some people start off fresh on Amazon and go right into private label. I don't recommend that, but it's possible. Uh, determine your private label goals. Determine your budget. Uh, define and research a hot niche. This is kind of when you get into the real meat of it. Uh, you want to pick a niche that people are actually interested in and will buy from. Uh, then we narrow down to the product level. I'll show you exactly what I do to find private label products, how I, how I pick. Uh, there's videos in there that show, uh, show me actually doing live searches of, of how to pick, narrow down to a product, what I'm looking for when I'm looking for a private label product. Um, lesson nine is finding your suppliers. Lesson 10, actually what to do when you're contacting them, what to say. Do you get on the, e get on the phone? Do you send them an email? Do you get on Skype? Lesson 11, what if you need to source overseas? Um, there may be products, that some, a product that you pick, you just cannot find a supplier domestically, and that's totally fine. There are actually some ways to do the easy way method, even if you have to source overseas. Lesson 12, we get into brand names, logos, and packaging. Uh, 13, placing your first order and crafting a killer listing. This is so important. You can't just throw up a crappy listing and expect to sell, so we're gonna go into keywords, what to, how to get, do keyword rich titles and bullet points and descriptions. 14, what, when you're receiving your, your order, what to do. Um, 15, is, this is a big one, getting sales and reviews. Uh, you have to get some momentum and you need sales and reviews quickly, so we go very deep into this. Um, 16, maintaining inventory levels. Uh, very, very important uh, things you can do to make sure that you never run out of stock. And last, lesson 17 is wash, rinse, and repeat. So once you get it going, you can do the same exact thing. And what's so exciting about this is what my very first supplier were the, the one that's just down the road from me. They have several items and I've launched two or three other products from their exact same line. So once you kind of get a relationship with somebody, you can just, you can basically do their whole line um, and, and private label mini products. And then the big, big thing about this, besides the lessons, and the lessons are, are in PDF format with videos, it, but the biggest piece about this is there's a private Facebook community. And the mentoring involved with it, um, sorry, is uh, people like uh, Skip McGrath are in there. He's answering questions all the time. And then Jenny Hunt, who I partnered up with in this mentoring program, and myself, we walk you through the all the steps. Um, and if you have questions, you can post them there. You can send private messages. Um, essentially, we're just there to help you. And once you're in the private Facebook community, you're in there for life. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, it's not something that you have to get in and then you can, you know, you have to start it right away, although it's better if you do. Um, but you know, once you're in, you're in. Uh, the benefits to you, you can easily have your own private label product by Q4. You guys that have been selling online for a while, you know what Q4 is like. Uh, imagine having your own product by Q4. That's very, very doable. You can actually have probably several products by Q4 since we're you know still in April. Uh, a never-ending supply of inventory with absolutely no competition. Take back control of your business. Um, we have step-by-step -step lessons with assignments. So for those of you that are good learning that way, uh, you can break it down, uh, go lesson by lesson. Uh, if you wanna run through it in two weeks, you can run through it in two days, it doesn't matter. You can take your time, go through this, and we're there in the community to help you with questions. You're not alone. It's a, again, it's a supportive community of experienced experts and other sellers that are in there ready to, ready to help. Bonuses, uh, you get a free copy of my book, Private Label the Easy Way. Uh, this is just an ebook that goes through um, a lot of the, the, you know, the material that we went through today. Um, a lot more though than what we went on the webinar, but you get a free copy of that. Bonus number two, you get 50% off the private label wholesale supplier database. So if you, um, and you can probably find your wholesaler or your, your private label supplier right through here, you get this um, for 50% off. I think it's $97, so 
you get half off of that. So $48.50 would be your price on that. Um, and the bonus number three, this is the one I'm absolutely excited about. I've never done this before. Um, and just so you know, guys, this is my absolute first webinar what, that I've done. I've been on, I was on the Q4 webinars with Lance and Barrington in December, but this is the very first one I've ever done uh, just by myself with, with somebody else when I was running it. Um, I think webinars are cool. It's a really neat tool. What I want to do is go through all these 17 lessons and create a full webinar series live. And so you guys can run through it with me. I can, we'll do live, I'll live searches, like, you know, go, go on to Amazon and actually search products. I can tell you exactly what I look for when I'm looking for a certain product. I'll do that live on screen and it'll all be recorded. So don't worry if you, uh, you can't make it a certain, uh, certain session, that'll all be recorded for you. Um, but this is going to be so cool to be able to go through the whole process, private label process from start to finish on a webinar. Uh, I don't know how many webinars will take, um, but I'll do as many as it takes to go through it. So you'll get this. Um, this is easily valued at $9.97, probably more, but that's included. And I may even have Lance on there with me. Yeah, I'll hop on. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the fast action bonus. This is what you waited to the end to stick around for. Uh, Jenny Hunt and I just launched our PL finds, private label finds. So we have a team of people, um, and myself actually, I've, I've found a, a lot of these, is the first 70 people to sign up get access to 100 private label finds. So you can actually jump ahead to lesson 10, which is contacting the, or finding the supplier. This is so powerful. Uh, now, the thing about this is you may not find your exact product in here, but you're at least going to get some ideas of things that we're looking at. Uh, it'll kind of get your creative juices flowing on items that we think have good private label potential, but you could find your product out of here. So the first 70 people to sign up tonight get access to these finds. Um, that's the fax action bonus. Um, there's over 1,000 in value here. Last year, people paid, when we launched this one year ago, was $797. And we had a, a bunch of people get in. Um, tonight, our anniversary sale, 197 This ends May 4th. 80% um, off. Um, so I think it's a crazy deal. Crazy. Jenny talked me into doing this. <laughs> um, but uh, you get all of those, all those bonuses, all the 17 lessons, uh, my book, the half off the database, and then the one I'm super excited about, the webinar series, you get that included. And then the first 70 get the, the private label finds to get to your product, you know, get your research started right away. You can jump right in and skip like the first nine lessons. Uh, here's uh, my friend Joy Packard who did an incredible job at the, um, our conference. She says, the knowledge of being able to private label has changed my Amazon business forever. Uh, knowing I have the ability to brand myself and can, can scale that up has created endless opportunities and the ability to have financial freedom. So would love for you guys, the ones that want to get out on this um, to do that and let me Stop you mind if I get my testimonial yeah, real quick, to Ryan? I, I just got to say this. I mean, just meeting Ryan and learning about this, it's it's an absolute jump start. Um, it's not something where you're going to gradually, you know, you're going to pick sales up. I mean, it's it's a jump start. You literally go from doing a thousand a month to fifty thousand if you put the time. And we got guys doing six hundred thousand a month in our MM8 group that are doing exactly what Ryan's talking about. So. This isn't something that, you know, we're not playing around. Um, I, I just, it's not something where I have to beg you to do it. It's, it's uh, for me, it changed my whole business. So I'm forever grateful for uh, you teaching me this, Ryan. Oh, you're so welcome. And I'm actually, we have an opportunity to be able to put the, the link in here live. So you guys can just go right to it. Um, makes it so much easier here. Yep. So there it is. There's the offer. Lance, can you see that on your screen? Ada. Um, let me see. I don't see anything but that beautiful couple again. <laughs> we'll put it on our on the people in there, but I'll put it in the I'll put it in the chat too. Yeah, you can put it in the chat. I just wish Ryan I would have met you like seven years ago, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I would've I mean I, I wouldn't have had to run around like crazy. <laughs> Jenny says she sees it. Okay, good. Oh, cool. You guys can see the offer, but I also posted it in the um, in the chat there. Awesome. I'll cast it here. Okay. Tom sees it. Um, Jerry sees it. So, right. 
Lance, if you have a few more minutes, we can take some questions that we have from the folks that are in there. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. All right. Heidi asked, where do you get the product ideas? Um, for, for me, it's just, as I talk about in the private label uh, in the mentoring program is, um, what are you interested in? Uh, what products are you already selling really well? If you have a retail arbitrage or an online arbitrage item that you're just killing it with, then that's an option. Uh, Lance, what about you? How do you get ideas? There's there's many things. I would recommend that they um, look into this offer because I know there's a lot more detail into it. it it's it's a real detailed thing. Um, I wish I could give you like a quick answer, like you know, this is what you do and this is how you find the product. But there's a lot involved in it. Um, but you know, to make it easy, you just look for a, a lower rank. I try to stay below. I think Ryan said that he'll be, he'll go up to like thirty thousand, um, but it it depends on who you are. I like to go below 5,000 to get like the quick hitters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's ways that you can sort pricing. You can sort it for just the $20 items. Um, there's all kinds of tips and tricks for, for looking up products. Now it's like, there's so many, I don't know which one to pick. <laughs> right. Um, Patty asked, how does the 3% number come out to in the actual number? Um, I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll try to find, um, it's, there's a, a spreadsheet that Jim Cochran puts out. It's called the Category Rank Spreadsheet. Uh, the three percent rank, I'll tell you, because I'll actually, guys, just if you want to know what that is, just email me Ryan at RyanRieger.com. But let me find real quick what that number is for you, Patty. I have it saved in my phone. If we ever are out and about and we do any kind of retail arbitrage, which is very, very, very rare, um, uh, so like three percent in home and kitchen. According to this, I don't know how up to date this is, but it would be five hundred ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and fourteen is the top. That's top one percent. I'm sorry, top three percent. One million seven hundred ninety-three thousand. So that's pretty high, actually, for in home and kitchen. I probably, I probably in home and kitchen actually you want to stay under a million. Um, you know, you're not going to sell a ton of a million, but if you're getting it very easy and not having to pull out of work into it, then. I wouldn't have a problem going for um for retail arbitrage. I would snag something at a million, but not for right. privately. Yeah, just, you got to remember, guys, this is a replenishable that you want to keep keep bringing in and bringing Absolutely. in. And just so you know, like um, Lance and I could probably talk about our, our criteria, and he might have different criteria than me. And so, you know, this is something that whatever is best for your business, what works for me or what I prefer may not be what you guys prefer. That's a that's a presentation in itself. There's so many things that I, you know. <laughs> um, Alan asked if we should have our own website. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, I think uh, Lance answered in there like I wouldn't start th with that, but um, once it takes off, then you can think about getting a website. Um, Abe asked, how do you begin your research into a product idea, uh, tools, etc.? Oh man, uh, my absolute favorite tool, uh, Jungle Scout. Yeah, sure. Jungle Scout. Uh, but. We, uh, we do a lot with Jungle Scout. Anthony, is this part of the Proven Amazon course? It is not part of the Proven Amazon course. That's a great question, though. Um, my book, just so you know, my book is part of the Proven Amazon course. Or If I could skip ahead, Ryan, um, this is a good question for you. What's a good budget to start with considering cost of products marketing for sales? Um, well, for me, I mean, I, I started with under $1,000. Uh, so I was able to get it with, you know, just get a couple cases to start. Um, and it honestly depends on the product that you pick, you know, is it an item that's going to retail for $50 or is it an item that retails for 20? Um, that makes a whole different, a lot of difference in what cost you're going to get at. Are you, you know, if you're able to find it in the United States, it's going to be a whole lot easier. If it's a wholesaler, can you just buy just a couple cases to get started? Um, but I mean, I would think, for most people, you're probably if you can do the easy way method, you can get started with a thousand dollars or under. This is a good question that I can answer um, mm -hmm. from Bill. Yeah, he wants to know: Is toys something you could private label? I would say there there is some generic toys. Let me give you an example of a toy you could private label. I remember there's a toy if I found at Ollie's um, three or four years ago, and it it wasn't brand driven. It was a sprinkler attachment that was shaped like a fireman's head. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you came across any of those. I know a couple of the other guys in the group were killing it with those things. Um, 
but it was just a generic little sprinkler attachment. The water comes out the fireman's eyes or head, or I don't know how it worked, but that was something where you could probably just, you know, create a product that's based around that search term sprinkler, you know, something that people are searching for. Right. Um, but a toy like a, a zoomer or something like that would be pretty tough to replicate, replicate considering they really have a stronghold on, if you think toy dog, you think zoomer, you know, um, if it's like real brand driven, then I would say no. Right. I agree with you there. Um, Grant asked if we use keyword prospector. He's probably talking about keyword inspector. Yeah, I actually do. Lance, do you use keyword inspector? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's a nice tool where you can find out um, all the keywords that a product is ranking for. Yeah. Uh, Heidi asked, how long is the mentoring period? We, When we first started out a year ago, we um, made it like six months because it's um, that's how long we in, intended people to take to go through this. But you can go through this a whole lot faster. Um, but the mentoring period is as long as you want it to be. We're we're gonna st the Facebook group is open, um, honestly forever. I mean, as long as Facebook's around, <laughs> and as long as you know, uh, you still want to do private label. So there's no limit on that. Um, we talked about budget, marketing, sales. Patty wants to know about sponsored ads. Yeah, we we all use sponsored ads. Um, a great way to get some more eyes onto your products. Cool. Jenny um, didn't help him answer questions. Thanks, Jenny. Oh, sure. awesome. Yeah, and you can manipulate um, sponsored ads to create um, more traffic on your product. I actually um, lately haven't been using ads as much to launch products just because you don't have a heck of a lot of reviews when you're just starting out, uh, but they work later when you get more reviews on the product. Uh, Bruce asks, how easy is it for those of us outside the USA to buy from wholesalers in the U.S.? Oh, it's not hard. I mean, I, you have some more steps to go through. Somebody that actually could be very helpful with that is Jason Tay, who's in our private label mentoring group. And Barrington. <laughs> Barrington, absolutely, yeah. He, um, Jason and Barrington buy from U.S. wholesalers all the time, and they're out of this, out of um, outside of the United States. Essentially, what you would do then is you just have them. You could order from that wholesaler, and then either have them ship it directly to Amazon for you, or use a prep center like the Bullards in Tennessee, have it shipped to them, have them inspect everything for you. They could put the stickers on for you. Um, they've actually beefed up the warehouse quite a bit and do a whole lot more than what they used to. So they can take items out of the packaging, put it in your own packaging, attach your sticker. They actually do that for one of my products. I want to see if I can dig up, Brian, um, an email that I used to send a supplier showing them exactly what to do, you know, to send in my products, all the criteria. So maybe that can be useful for your group. Um, especially for those living outside of the U.S. Vincent, any restrictions when importing items to the U.S.? How about customs? Yeah, there are definitely, I mean, there are customs issues when you're, but we're talking about private label the easy way, so hopefully you're able to find them domestically. But if you do have to, if you end up finding that your product is only available in China, uh, then yeah, there are issues with customs, but the people who do that really well, like, you know, I have a buddy in my MMA group, Eric Hardwick, his wife has become a customs master, and she talked about that at our conference. Essentially, there's brokers and people that will help you through that process so you don't have to really deal with it. Um, so if you're going to import from overseas, you would definitely want to get a broker. And to be really 100% honest with you, I've not gone through this process because I use the easy way and I, and I get it from the States. I've actually um, messed with this a little bit, Ryan, with the brokers. And it's funny because when you're working with these people, with these people, one thing leads to another. So you're working with a wholesaler and they might know somebody, you know, cause they're bringing in stuff obviously. Um, so you get these contacts as you go along, just, you know, inching from one thing to the next. Right. Let's see Delaney, how much of a time commitment would it be? I mean, honestly, it's uh, whatever you have time to put into it. Uh, you could just do it on a couple hours a week, honestly. I mean, it'll take you longer, uh, but the lessons are, all they are sent to you via email, like drip fed through the email. But once you get in the Facebook group, they're all there in their entirety. So you can go through as fast or as slow as you want to. Um, but it just depends on what else you're doing. I mean, if you're working a full-time job or you're heavy into retail arbitrage and online arbitrage, uh, you could have a product easily within the next couple months. Um, if you just put a little bit of time into it, I, mean, I would say just even just a few hours a week, um, Karen, um, Karen. Once you have the product identified, the hardest, the longest process will be 
identifying the product and getting the supplier. Um, after that, it's pretty easy. Lance, what were you going to say? Bud? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So Karen said, how do you handle business insurance? That's a good question. It always comes up. <laughs> yeah. um, people worry about that one. And usually we're stuttering. We don't know what to say with that. Um, I typically go through, um, there's something, especially with China, when they're sending something over, I can't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's like CIF or CAF, um, which I can't remember what that acronym stands for. But basically, they're responsible if the boat sinks or if anything happens to your products uh -huh. um, in that terms of insurance. I know there's different aspects of insurance. Um, also, one of the groups Barrington recommends, he always recommends, was it Lloyd's of London? Lloyd's yeah, of London, right. That's another one you could use um, for that. But a lot of times you can work under their umbrella um, of your supplier. So that's that's all with the relationships too. Um, Tom asked below about when you're removing labels and putting your own on there, what about, you know, copyright infringement? Um, yeah, you definitely want to look into that because there's some items that might have, um, a, you know, a patent on a certain design or anything. So you can definitely, I mean, this, we're talking about stuff that's pretty generic that, um, like you know, spatulas and things like that, unless there's a certain design on it, but that's definitely smart to look into that. And, and the good thing, Ryan, is when you're working with a manufacturer, they're the manufacturer. So if they're right. selling it to you, it's okay because they're the one manufacturing <laughs> it. Um, but, but if it's coming from China, you got to watch out. Right. Yeah, if you're going from China, they'll sell you anything in China. They'll sell you anything. <laughs> yeah, they'll sell you anything. But, but so, yeah, you definitely need to do your research. I'm not saying don't do research on it. And just, you know, you can, if you're getting it from a wholesaler, they'll know. I mean, there's a, in, a patent, you know, some kind of patent on it. But, um, yeah, you definitely don't want to launch a product that's patented. Um, Cliff asks, when do we start? You can start right away. You, once you get into the program, you're you're there. Um, all the lessons are in the Facebook group. And um, Patty asked, you know, about drip fed. You, you're in there for life. The lessons are available as soon as you're in, in the Facebook group. Um, and you can go as fast or as slow as you want. And this, this is something, Ryan, if I can just add in real quick. Yeah, this please. is something that can happen quickly. If you're serious and you have the drive to do this, I mean, I just launched the product and – in two weeks, I'm already down to 3,000 ranks selling like 30 to 40 a day. So um, if you have the drive and, you, and if you really – the hard part is finding the product. Once you find the product, you're fine. So that's the hardest part. Right. Let's see here. Um, Sherry, what are your thoughts on private labeling supplements? Um, I would be scared about doing private label supplements. Lance, what about you? I, I don't – you there's there's definitely people. opportunity in those. I haven't I haven't messed around with them, but I know a lot of guys from like the ASM courses and stuff. Um, there's so there's these big courses that are like three thousand, four thousand um, dollars, and I think supplements is one of the examples they use in their courses. So yeah. obviously, a lot of people are probably going to go in that direction. Yeah. Um, so I would stay away from it for that. Yeah, one. I mean, so I'm not, again, I wouldn't tell somebody not to do something. It just for me, sure, yeah. it's probably a little bit scary. Um, then. Supple, there are it's just tons of competition too. A lot of competition. If you look on any, any kind of supplement, you'll see tons and tons of them. So for me, that wouldn't be considered the easy way. Um, <laughs> Delaney asks, "What about once you get started in the business? Is it like a full time job?" Well, ask Lance. What did you do today, today Lance? Oh man, I, Ryan called me today. He's like, "What do you do?" And I had to think about it. You know, when you're working hard, that's an easy answer. Oh man, I was digging ditches or I'm breaking my back. I was like, "Wait a minute, what did I do today?" And then I remembered, I was like, that's right. I just sent in, you know, 800 units from the Ballards. They sent some stuff in for me. And if you don't know who the Ballards are, they have a, uh, a warehouse, um, a fulfillment center where if you're international, you can leverage somebody like that. Um, so that's what I did today. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, Delaney, it's um, really once you get it started, it's, it's not a lot of work. You just need to make sure that you're in, you stay in stock. And for me, that's an email. Um, so it is really, really easy. The hard part's up front. The work is up front. The work is going through the lessons, finding your product, getting it launched, getting the listing created. So there is work. All the work is honestly front loaded. Once you get it going, there's not really a whole lot you need to do. Um, you'll want to keep continue to check your velocity, how fast you're selling. And um, eventually, you might need to do um, do some more uh, giveaways or you know tactics. And we'll talk about that in the program. But they were saying you can't just like set it, forget it. But it's not like retail arbitrage where you're constantly hustling, going around from store to store. Um, 
Anthony asked, you uh, purchased the course. Yeah, once uh, we'll go through after this webinar is over and accept everybody, um, we have to accept you. Vincent asked about uh, the uh, outside of the USA, how can we get a reseller certificate and tax ID? Uh, that's actually a good question for Barrington. There's a company he uses, um, incorporate.com, I think. Is that right, Lance? I'm not sure who he uses. Is that who he uses? It sounds familiar. So. It's, um, it's honestly not really hard. I, and again, I'm in Texas, so to be, it'd probably be better for somebody that's actually done this outside of the States, uh, Vincent. But um, I know that Jason Tay can buy wholesale. He's in Singapore. He can buy wholesale in, in the United States without a U.S. business. And he has a form. He's told people about that. And when I was at CES with him last year, we were talking about private label, and this question came up. And he was telling them about, about a form that they needed. Um, if uh, you can email me, and I can find that out for you. Um, or if you get in the face, if you decide to purchase and get in the Facebook group, then uh, Jason Tay is actually in there. Um, again, we had asked about liability insurance. Barrington uses Lloyd's of London. Um, I'll be honest with you; I don't have any for mine. Mine's a generic item that's not ingestible. I'm not really concerned about that. So it's just something you know, whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with that, that's fine. There's definitely companies out there that do liability insurance for private label. Um, it's not hard to find. I just haven't gone down that road yet. And just so you guys know, it's 808. I can stick around for a few more minutes. Lance, how are you? I don't want to, I want to be respectful of you guys' times and answer as many questions as we can get. Hey, Ryan. Did I lose you? Hello, hello. I think I lost, um, can't hear anything. Can you guys hear me? I can answer some questions while Ryan hops back on. All right, cool. Let's see what else we got here. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, cool. I think we're still on, guys. Um, Bruce, this is about creating your privately. Oh, that's um. Sorry, guys. I'm pretty crummy at finding questions. <laughs> All right, Lance. I'm back on. Can you hear me? There you are. All right. I was trying to find the questions. I couldn't. Oh, find no any. problem. Okay, so sorry about that. We had a technical glitch. Oh, good. The Orioles are winning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, um, Sherry. How often do you plan to do the webinars? Time frame. Um, I don't know, honestly, Sherry. This is just an idea. I I, I talked. I was deciding to do just um, a few days ago. I talked to Jenny Hunt about it, and so I imagine it'll be within the next month or so um, that we'll start those those webinars. Vincent asked if we're investing a thousand dollars into a product. How long will it take to get the return? One or two months. Man, that's really hard. Lance, do you have a answer for that one or know what you would say to that? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the product. Um, I'm trying to think of something that... And the sales know. rank, how fast, you know, how fast is it selling? Well, uh, you typically, it, I mean, if you really want to do a good launch, you might have to, you might have to put a thousand up, you know, and, and um, promotions. Um, it all depends though. I think you get a thousand back fairly quickly if you have a good product. Yeah. Because all that stuff evens out. Um but the one thing you want to focus on is I, w I wouldn't worry about getting the thousand back. I would worry about just breaking even mm -hmm. and then you're all in the, you're in the green. So cool. Let's see. it's tough because it all, it depends on the product. If you have a crappy product, you won't get your money back for a while. 
I think I lost the chat at, somehow. Too. I'm still here. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions here. Um, I still I think, have the. I think that's everything in here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, Anthony asked where can I get the private label book. Um, you're a member of the Proven Amazon course. Anthony, email me at ryan at ryanrieger.com. I'll find the link for you. I'm actually not sure it's in pack, to be honest with you. But it's um, they. I spoke at CES last year, and it was um, a link that they made available for free for everybody that was at CES. Uh, but I'll, I can um, I can send it to you. So just uh, email me, ryan at ryanrieger.com. Cliff asks, it's a Facebook group. Yeah, Cliff, it's a Facebook group. And... Um, once you are in, we you just uh, base on the thank you page. It gives you the link to the group to ask to join, and then we'll we'll go through and, and manually um, get everybody in. Uh, how about private label coffee? Do you recommend? Oh man, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny question. That you, it's funny that you would ask that, Anselmo. We actually, our group MM8 started a, a coffee called Big Smooth Coffee, <laughs> and we've uh, it's. It, coffee is quite competitive, to be honest with you. So, uh, that's if you have a product that is uh, a coffee that's already maybe out there, uh, people are buying in the stores. It's not on Amazon yet, and you can get the exclusive for it. Uh, it's doable. I'm not saying it's not doable with coffee starting uh, fresh, but it's just very competitive, and you'll have to work really hard and probably do a lot of giveaways um, to get it to start going. Yeah, yeah. There's there's some guys really doing good with coffee, um, but it is competitive. So the people that are doing good are probably putting in a lot of time, um, devoting their their time and energy to that coffee product. Um, so I, I like what Ryan said. I mirror that. Uh, I would go after more brand driven coffee and try to get an exclusive. Okay, and we'll just take two more questions here. Um, Delaney, how much money do you need to upfront to start off? We kind of touched on that a little bit, but I started with it about five with about five hundred dollars, and uh, I we're saying we probably a thousand or less if you're doing the easy way. Lauren, do you feel like Amazon is watching your returns much more closely because you are doing private label? Like, what if you got over three to five returns on an item? Won't Amazon flag your account? I haven't had any issues, Lance. Have you had issues with it's actually Amazon flagging your? Yeah. yeah, I actually have more issues with retail arbitrage because you do the onesie twosie. So, um, but with this kind of stuff, you sell so much that your percentages always look low. Yeah. Um, especially if you have a good product. So. All right, and then Heidi asked, "What percentage of private label do you have in your business?" Um, I'm probably seventy-five percent private label, Heidi. Uh, the rest would be a mixture of wholesale, uh, retail arbitrage that my mom does for me, and some online arbitrage. Yeah, I'd say same here. Probably like 80%, 75%. Cool. Same as Ryan. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I'll probably keep the chat open for just a couple more minutes, but just to be respectful of your time, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, end this. And we very much appreciate taking your time to do this. Um, just remember the sale ends on May the 4th, which is next Wednesday. You can get in for 197 up till then. Uh, then the price goes way back up. So um, excited to do these webinars again with you. Hopefully that goes, um, you guys would want to do the, the private label sessions with me. That'll be a lot of fun. So guys, again, thanks so much. Lance, thank you so much for being on here. Very thanks, much Ryan, appreciate it, buddy. So I appreciate it. I want to get the music back on. All right. Malene, get on the drums. <laughs>